Hello and welcome to the Relax It's Retirement Podcast with your host, Josh Leonard, where we talk about transitioning into retirement with intent. I'm Wendy McConnell. Now we have Josh today and we also have Yana, who is a special guest, which is, of course, Josh's wife, Mm -hmm. co-worker, (laughs) mother of his children. Uh, did I miss anything? Girlfriend. Girlfriend, mistress. Oh, no, 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 no. All in oh, one. Oh, all in oh, one. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> so what is the special occasion that we have Yana joining us today, Josh? Yeah. So I recently completed my my big bike race, my big goal of the year. And, um, you know, as we were checking into this race, uh, Victoria, who works with uh, one of the don- or one of the charities in association with the race, said that, "Oh, Yana, you're here too. Okay, the race crew is actually more important than the racer. <laughs> so, uh, as as you hear the story, Wendy, you'll understand why the race crew is actually more important than the racer. So, uh, <laughs> since Yana was there supporting me in many many ways, um, I thought I'd have her on to talk about this huge race." Uh-huh. So you were there to help aid the racer? Yes. Yeah, so I would say that the typical job of a crew member is to provide motivation and fuel and bike support and um, none of which I felt that I actually could provide if <laughs> something <laughs> happened. I know nothing of bikes um, and I really was not like outfitted um, but Josh told me like, here is my water pouch. You need, you know, he, he gave me some very strict instructions. So like I knew if I stuck to these very strict instructions, I could do it. But I will have to say that there are so many people and, um, that are supporting these racers, um, that are absolutely outstanding, um, that really put my crewing to shame. So uh, I, don't <laughs> I know was about there, that. but there were a lot of a, just a lot of uh, people that just were absolutely outstanding. Yeah, I also have so, to note that Yana got me into this race, Wendy. So I don't know if you've heard oh. this story, but okay, because I was going to say, did she get assigned this or did she <laughs> ask for this? So, you know, I heard about Leadville and I actually had no idea what it was about. I knew it was in the Colorado Rockies. Um, I just, you know, I, I, somebody, you know, a friend of ours mentioned that they were going to do it. And I didn't really understand first what racing in elevation is, um, or (laughs) what it would actually take to do it. Um, but all I knew is Josh has an immense amount of determination and grit, and I really just have never seen him, um, not finish something, um, you know, that he started and, you know, he, he's such a, he's so determined and focused on, you know, his goals. I actually, there was no part of me that thought he wouldn't finish it or he wouldn't do well. So I feel like this is a, (laughs) a a reoccurring theme throughout this story is, um, (laughs) you know, last year I did the two half iron man mans. We talked about that, Wendy. And, you know, the bike mm-hmm. element of that is a 56 <laughs> mile ride. Um, so Yana was like, yeah, Josh did this Ironman thing. He can, he can do whatever this Leadville bike race is. Keep in mind the Leadville MTB 100 is not just one. It's actually 105 miles at elevation, mountain biking, not on the road. So it's it's like a lot more difficult. Yeah, but nobody, um, no, but no, no biker ever says, like I never heard anybody say 105 miles. Everybody's like, eh, it's about 100. Like nobody ever talked about like the extra five they'd have to do, you know? So I, yeah, yeah. I was like, I when you hit 100, you, you are all, you all of a sudden you're worried about that last you just yeah. round <laughs> up. Yeah. You just round up at that point. Right. Yeah. So it's like a hundred, you what's know, the it's, yeah. What's the difference? Yeah. yeah. So there's Yana, a lot of downhill too, to be fair. There is. Yeah. There's a lot of up and a lot of down. Um, Yana had, had texted me and I was actually in Chicago, uh, at Morningstar headquarters in meetings. And, uh, she was like, Oh, you gonna do this bike race? And I looked it up and I'm like, I think that's like a little advanced for me. And then we we talked about it. And uh at that point I had already committed him because <laughs> I had already told the um, you know, our friend that he was, yeah, he, he'll do it. So I actually then said, you know, you can't make me look like an asshole. Um, 
So <laughs> you got you got to follow through with it. So you're doing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're gonna have to do it. So, um, but he was. I mean, you were getting into. I mean, you had just got had, the bike. Yeah, yeah, I had biked quite a bit. And um, I and didn't. Was. Yeah, yeah, you were biking, and I didn't know you needed yet another bike. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the the joke of cycling, Wendy, <laughs> is how many bikes is enough, and it's n plus one. So however many you have, plus one more is how many bikes you need. Um, okay. I had just gotten a fat bike so I could ride in the winter and on the beaches here. And uh, I thought that that would be the perfect yep, bike nope, to do it not in. Not at all. And, oh, you already have a bike with those big tires. Like, nope. just take that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we had to get another bike. But uh, I think as we were looking at registering for the race, um, one of the ways that you can enter for the race, yeah. which is the way that, that I did, was through a donation. So, uh, much like if you want to do the Boston Marathon or the Chicago Marathon, Either you qualify through doing multiple qualifying races and getting a very specific time. Which we didn't. Yeah, which I, I didn't also have time to train and then, you know, get a specific time in another race. So yeah. uh, we donated. And and when we had talked about it, Yana was like, well, what's the cause? And, well, the cause is to support a scholarship for the local high school kids there in Leadville, Colorado. So each kid in the school system there gets a $2,000 uh, you know, tuition, scholarship, scholarship yeah. um, which is absolutely incredible. We actually ended up meeting a couple, yeah, yeah. a couple, a couple, uh, recent graduates mm -hmm. who, um, said, you know, I received the scholarship, um, and one's going to be a fireman, um, and one's going into the arts. So it was actually, it, it was, it was incredible to see like, you know, the donation and actually going somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. So let's um let's go back a little bit. Let's talk about the training aspect. Okay. How did that go? So uh, five days a week uh, was my training schedule. So uh, one of the ways that you can kind of uh, trick your body to build endurance is through like interval training. So pedaling at a very specific rate, putting out a very specific amount of power for certain intervals over time. So a lot of those workouts were condensed down into like an hour. Um, and then on the weekends I do longer rides. So, uh, I think here at home, one of my longer rides was like 70 miles, which took me five or six hours, you know? So that's a commitment for the family too. And a commitment for Yana to be like, yeah, by the way, I'm just going to disappear for five hours <laughs> on my bicycle. And, um, he wasn't golfing yeah. this time. Just to that's right. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was <laughs> It's only one. He was going to do that the next day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. can only have one one hobby at a yeah, time here. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I don't hunt, you know, or fish no, too. You can yeah, only do so many of these yeah. uh, all day activities. Um, so he's very was... dedicated. I would say he's very dedicated. He'd wake up at like five. Uh, there'd be a lot of grunting in the basement. Um, I think there was a lot of spitting or something. There's some stuff happening in the basement. <laughs> As he was getting getting ready yeah, for yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, one of the gross yeah. things about, like, any endurance sport is, you know, you kind of <laughs> need to get some stuff out when you're breathing really heavily. So, you know. Yeah. yeah. To uh, Well, I mean, to show your commitment, you went to the location yeah. of the race. So we headed out. Extremely early. Yeah, we headed out to Colorado three weeks early. So we had a few podcasts that we recorded out there when we were staying in Breckenridge. Uh, we drove out there as a family. Oh, that's incredible. Um, so that was, that was quite a journey with two kids and, uh, we got out there and the day after we got there, I'm like, I'm going to go ride part of the course. And the first kind of difficult climb is called St. Kevin's and you climb up and pretty quickly it gets to like a 16% grade, which is steep. Right. If you look at it, you're like, oh, you're not supposed to ride a bicycle up that. And it's like loose, uh, rocky soil. And uh, I'm riding up this, Wendy, and I, I have a heart rate monitor and my power output. And I'm looking and I feel like I can't breathe anymore. <laughs> and my heart rate is like maxing out. And I'm like, I can't even get up this first hill. <laughs> like, how am I going to do this freaking race? You know, like. I, I'm I'm struggling here, and uh, so elevation's I, no joke. I mean, we we definitely <laughs> felt it. Um, just being out there, I think it really helped us just adjust in a really good way. Um, but I, I mean, I was getting winded walking up steps, and then Josh said that he was going to go climb that big 
mountain. I was like, okay, have fun, <laughs> have yeah. fun man. Yeah. Good, luck. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Good luck with that. As I struggle up the steps here. Um, but yeah, it was um, Leadville from an elevation. It's 10,500 feet. Um, 10,500 feet. So. And that's where you start and end the race. And then the, the highest part is 12,500, which is Columbine. But um, yeah. yeah, so I, I got through that first training ride. Felt pretty discouraged. Um, but right by where we were staying, there was a, uh, a nice path that went up. Baldy uh, Ridge. Yeah, Mount Baldy. So up 12,500 feet. And that was a good practice ride. So similar terrain. I rode that a few times. Gained some confidence there. Um, uh, I guess about two weeks out, I rode 85 miles of the course, um, which I learned that I drank and eat a lot more at elevation, too. I had packed a bunch of food and, like, a whole hydration pack and two water bottles, and I went through it all probably, like, 50 Par- miles way into quicker, it. Way quicker, probably. Yeah, way than quicker you, than yeah, I thought. Yeah. And I was like, uh, well, what do I do now? Because I'm kind of in the middle of the woods, and... Uh, Eventually, I found a gas station, and I was able to recharge, but uh, that ride went a lot longer than I thought, yeah. and it was dark, and I'm, like, trying to find my way back to the car. Yana and the kids are, like, an <laughs> hour away, and it's, you know, 9, yeah, like, 10 o'clock at night. She's like, well, you better figure it out, because I don't know what you're going to do otherwise. Yeah, I was like, I'm not getting the kids well, we, up We there need right. you back, y- yeah. gosh. Yeah. Well, I was like, I'm not getting the kids out of bed, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, either <laughs> walk or walk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, that was good. I think after that, I, I had gained some confidence because I covered, I saw a lot of the territory. But it was still wild. I mean, the temperature there changed. It would hail. Mm-hmm. Um, it would hail and then it would be hot and then it would rain. And like the, the, it, it was like the temperature just kept changing. Like you weren't sure every hour. Yeah. Yeah. You have to kind of carry a couple yeah. things with you. I had brought like a rain jacket that I could put on, which was good because even during that training ride, it hailed on me and rained on and off a couple times. Um, some thunder and lightning too, yeah. which um, is a little spooky when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're kind of the one and you're high, thing really sticking high. up. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's some danger to it, yeah. but I got back from the training ride. Um, we got prepped, I think, you know, the night before, I think everyone was excited. I was kind of doing all my math to see the times of hitting the aid stations and I was kind of targeted at 10 hours. I thought I could do 10 hours. Yeah. Yeah. And I I was like very focused on him (laughs) calculating this out because I said, okay, I'm going to be here waiting for you. I need to know like approximately what time you plan (laughs) to ride through, you know, just so I can like figure out where I need to be at what time. Um, So he was, you know, sitting there figuring all that out. And yeah. And I'm like, well, I I, I think I'm going to be here at this time, but I have to be here by that time. Right. So So there are cutoff times. So if you don't make a certain time, then, you know, you they they ask you to uh, exit the course. Yeah. Please leave. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we got all that sad. ready. Uh, the day before, too, we had the athlete meeting. Oh, uh, yeah. Which we had to go out, and uh, it was a great motivational meeting. W- <laughs> but on the way out there, we had brought our bikes with yes. us. We were going to ride around a little bit. I wanted to see, I wanted to show Yana Powerline, this one part of the course that's like really steep. I keep, and I thought, you know, I, I keep telling Josh, like, I love that you want to show me and that you want me to be there with you and like mentally I am sweetheart but he was like no no no, like I want you to ride out with me you know <laughs> and you're like I don't I can skip that part <laughs> like, I'm, okay yeah and uh, you know what I, I do have an incredible bike our um we we just have such a great partner here in St. Joseph um uh, Kevin at Bedlam yeah, yeah Kevin at Bedlam and he has outfitted my and he told me that I could ride my bike in Leadville so I was like I could do this yeah, tell him say thanks for nothing. Yeah. I don't, I don't really want, want to. to, but I could <laughs> in theory. Yeah, yeah. Um, driving out there, yeah. So we're driving out there, and my bike is on the back of the car, and Josh's, and our car gets hit. Yeah. So the day before the race, because yeah, the day yeah. before the race, we're at a light, and somebody hits like hits us. Um, you know, they were trying to make a right turn, and they had this big box hanging out of their you know pickup truck. And the box hits my bike and cuts my brakes. So I had no brakes. And then um, swipes swipes the car. So kind of like, you know, we have a mark on the car. We pull over and, you know, thank God Josh's bike 
not touched. Everything's okay. You know, thank God <laughs> we're both. Uh, my bike yeah. suffered, yeah. Um, but his bike completely fine. And you know, I said, okay, we got to make it to this meeting. <laughs> Let's go. Like we have a, you know, we have somewhere to go, and your bike is fine. So, you know, move on. We're yeah. moving on. So yeah, we got in, and you know, we yeah made our way down. But that the athlete meeting was pretty cool too. They had, um, you know, some of the local people that have done the race. The oldest person doing <sighs> the race was an eighty year old man. Um, there are people, this was the 30th year that they've done this race, and there's people that have done it every single 30 year. 30 years, incredible. Um, and finished it all 30 years, too, which is A also. A lot of women, I wanted to just, quick shout out, there's just so many women who do this race, and, you know, I I couldn't even imagine, but the grit on those women. Yeah. You know, just they're powering through it, so. Well, yeah, the, the woman that um, won the race was, um, there, there's a podcast that talks about Leadville yes. all the time, and it is the stepdaughter of one of the hosts of it. Him and his wife have done this race for many, many years. I think she's almost done it 20 times. He's done it like 21 times. And uh, their daughter won the race for yeah. the women's. She had got into bike racing in conjunction with this race with her parents and is finished with her parents. And uh, the course is an out and back. So you ride out you know, 52.5 miles and then back and a couple deviations, but pretty much the same way out and back. And on the one big climb, which is the turnaround point, she was coming down as the lead woman and saw her parents and they kind of made eye contact and, you know, they all knew. Yeah. And I thought, oh my gosh, what a cool <laughs> moment um, to like be able to see your, your child, like you're going to win this thing yeah. and we're seeing you mid race while we're doing the same activity. Like, I don't know. I just thought that was such a cool opportunity. But there were tons, um, tons of like feel good stories out there. Sure. Too, certainly that. so. Yeah. I think a lot of people overcoming challenges mm. um, and really pushing themselves through difficulty. So there was a, there was somebody that was doing a tandem. There was quite a few yeah. tandem bikes too. So two people two, um, on one bike. So yeah. <laughs> one better not be slacking. That's, <laughs> That's all right. I got yeah. To say. yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yana said so, she'll do it with me tandem. She, just she's <laughs> uh, riding in the back, and you know I better yeah. pedal. Um, you know, may I remind you, Josh, that the reason that you decided to do these races is because you were so mesmerized by her giving birth. That's right. That you thought these were the only things that could even compare. So she's already done her part. That's right. That's okay. right. Oh yeah, yeah. wow! I, I like that spin on it. <laughs> I like that spin. I, you know, I, I still don't know that I was in enough pain then. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I, you know, it, it was actually the the meeting before, like the um, was it? I mean, it felt like some. Um, it was just so. It was very motivational. It was, and, it was, and I made I made Diana watch way too many YouTube videos ahead of time about the race <laughs> and like pros talking about the race and how difficult it was. I'm like. Honey, see, it's really hard. Even like these pros are saying it's really hard. Yeah. And uh, in the one, they're like uh, Lachlan Morton and Alex Howes, I think, are the two pros. And and they go, oh, you know, at the end of the t the athlete meeting, it was like I didn't know if we were going to start a riot, like go flip over a car or what. <laughs> like it was very motivational. Very motivational. Um, <laughs> Ken Clover, one of the founders, is known for like you know saying Leadville many times, but uh, you know his whole thing around the race is hey this takes a lot of grit and determination and like it's gonna hurt you're gonna want to stop but like keep pushing through and one of the things that uh i remember he said that kind of stuck with me is like you know you owe it you have a debt to everyone else that put up with your training schedule listen to you talk about biking for the last year you know has to listen <laughs> to you talk on the podcast about biking forever you yeah, know you have I this say, me too. you have this <laughs> debt to all these people to actually finish it and uh i had taken a video clip that our boys have enjoyed since of you know uh either you're gonna go home and you know people are gonna ask you did you finish the race and either you're gonna say yes or you're gonna spend the next half an hour giving them some crybaby excuse <laughs> yeah <clears throat> all right so we wake up it's race day what do we do Oh, get the kids packed up in the car. I think the boys were equally as excited as Oh, they were so chit chatty. Yeah. They were so chatty. The boys woke up at uh, I was about four, four. Yeah. four, four in the morning, and it was like maybe like eleven. Four. Like they were so chit chatty. They were ready to go. Um, you know, they were so pumped up. 
Uh, we got the car packed up, got everything in there. It was about an hour drive to Leadville. Which is an, it, it's actually a very cool drive because as you're driving in, there's like one road and you can see like a, just a, a line of cars going into Leadville for the race. Um, and so you can kind of like see it as we go through the mountains, just, you know, it's still dark cause the sun hadn't come up yet. Um, and so I was driving, um, yeah, we got there. You kind of parked. I jumped off on the bike road down to the start line. Yeah. Uh, the race is staged out in corrals. Um, so based on expected finish time, the pros are at the front, right? They don't have to pass all of us dads. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I was in the seventh of the 10th corral. So it, it's funny because it's it's like a corral. You're just kind of all lined up yeah. and they release you there's a big one shotgun. at a time. There's yeah, a there's a shotgun, shotgun start, start. So yeah. it's very Western. Um, Sounds serious. But you're just waiting for so long. So it's a like. Lot of antsy, it's a like, lot of antsy bikers. Yeah. It's 40 some degrees. It's cold and you're just like waiting. And waiting and then slowly I moving felt, up. I, I was so excited. I was so pumped. There was, a, there, I mean, there's a lot of family, you know, obviously the crew's all there for everybody, you know, getting everybody, um, everybody was really pumped to see the bikers go. And what, you know, what was also incredible, it's like, you're not only cheering for your biker, but everybody's cheering for everybody. So, I mean, yeah. it, it's not just like an individual, it really just felt like a whole team you were, you were sending off a team. So yeah, I think for most exciting. people, it's like a race against yourself or against the course. It's not like, yeah, you want to beat as many people as you can, but ultimately, it's a very supportive oh, environment. Oh, yeah, it felt very supportive. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I got up to the start line. You ride downhill for a while on road, um, so it's pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, so it's cold in the morning. want to make sure you're Fingers don't freeze right away, so I stopped and got coffee and donuts. Yeah, they have these really good. Sounds mini, good. Mini. <laughs> so while Josh is like suffering the cold, I uh, the kids and I went and got coffee and yeah, <laughs> a whole right. bunch of yeah. donuts. Yeah, to to keep warm. That's good. That's good. I'm yeah. glad that you guys weren't yeah. suffering at all. <laughs> Could have went back to sleep too. Um, but yeah, we we get down. So you you kind of go down and then you hit some some dirt roads. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, things slow down a little bit, but you're riding with a ton of people. I mean, there was a few thousand people doing the race, so you're kind of packed in with people. When I got to that first climb where I first kind of freaked out about the race, are you first talking to people? You know what? I was wondering, like, do you talk to be like, hey, how are you? Like, do you Depending guys talk? on the parts, yeah. Yeah. You guys talk Later or? in the race and at slow parts, you talk a lot. Um, Okay, but like as you're when you first started off, no, there, no, no, there you're going of, fast. You're going, you're, you're going, you're serious. Yeah. Okay, okay. It's only at the slow parts. Um, okay, because I, when I saw the pros rush by, there was like no talking, and I, like they yeah. were they were hyper focused. So I wasn't sure like yeah, what the. Yeah. <laughs> They're going too fast to talk. So yeah, yeah. A slow people <laughs> like when you're riding uphill at you know four miles an hour for like an hour straight, you you kind of pick up conversation with yeah. your neighbors. But uh, that first climb, I, I I felt great on. Like, I was in with other people. Like, I couldn't really go faster or slower. You're just in a pack with people, so you just try to keep moving, not were run into anyone. Were you breathing better? Were you, yeah, I was breathing great. I wasn't, wasn't really worried about it. Kind of got through uh, the first difficult section. I was like, oh, I got this. I'm good. Was it was it the the, the big dinner that your wife it was the big the dinner? I had, yeah, all the, really, all the pasta. Like, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Full credit there, Yana. <laughs> So when was the first time you got to see Yana and the boys so, on the track? Yeah, Twin Lakes. So like 40 miles in, yeah. which was the first checkpoint that I was like, if I'm going to finish this race, like I got to make it there in time. That's the first check. Yep, yep. And I made it in my target time. So on the 10 hour yep. pace, I was like right there. I think mm -hmm. Yana was surprised. I made it. I mean, she was tracking me, but like I was doing really good. Tracking. Um, so I will say like tracking was incredibly difficult because in the mountains it was like in and out. So I wasn't getting a very strong signal, um, and I, I had, like, a Find Me app, you know, on Apple. Um, and then they have on their website, like, as he passes certain checkpoints, like, you can see it. Um, but they don't always catch him either. So, yeah. So, yeah. So I was waiting, and I was really nervous because if he didn't make the first cutoff, we we're done, you know. So I'm like, oh, my God, you know. Yeah, I mean, you want to make – 40 miles of a 105 yeah. mile race. That's pretty disappointing if you're done 40 miles in. And it was amazing. Um, they had just, it was like a tailgate. There were just tents set up and, you know, people 
um, grilling and, you know, just cheering. And they kind of knew, um, you know, as the pros came in, yeah. you know, they were, oh, you know, and I knew one pro just because Josh um, replays it, the videos for me over and over. So, <laughs> <laughs> just so you know. yeah, yeah. So there's like one that does, ah! Um, like, but otherwise it was, you know, it, it, it was so much fun. Um, and then when Josh came in, I just like, I think I, I was like, Oh my God. Okay. What do you, okay. Okay. You know, like I'm like breathing heavily and like trying to figure out what he needed. Um, and right. he's just like, okay, so I'm going to need some water, <laughs> <laughs> like very calm. Need this? Yeah. All yeah. the bikers came in very calm and the, all the crew, well, the more inexperienced crew as myself were very like, okay, okay. <laughs> trying to get them, you know, trying to get them moving, making sure they were okay. Yeah. But so did you have any mishaps on the course? Um, not at, at that point. So at that point, I, I went up the big climb for the day, which is the turnaround point too. So seven miles uphill, turn around, and uh, at the top of Columbine, come back down. I was flying downhill, singing to myself because I was feeling great and you know, I feel like you could have gone faster. I feel like when you, even when you, even when you came to Twin Lakes, you looked like real good. Like, I just feel like you were, we <laughs> weren't really sweating. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was feeling good. And, and, you know, that is sort of the challenge of a 105 mile bike race is like, you don't want to go all out at the beginning because right. you're not going to have enough energy to make it to the to end. The, to the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's a balance there. Um, but yeah, came back through, saw Yana again, switched out packs and nutrition. And from there, then, you know, the next big challenge is climbing a power line. And, and you they saw the say, kids. You saw the kids. I saw, too. yeah, I saw uh, they were the hanging boys. out with, with some other kiddos, yeah. kind of just off the course. And as I was riding by, I saw them. And uh, it's funny, I think I passed six people whenever I was like waving to Eli and talking. Like somehow I just started pedaling faster, <laughs> talking to them. And, <laughs> Um, it, that was super cool to see them like on course and then, uh, made it to the power line, which yeah. is the big one that, uh, it's, it's almost impossible to ride up. The pros make it look very easy, but it's super steep and just unrelenting for like three miles. So, uh, it's tough. And, uh, I got through that and I thought what was like going through your head when you're going through all this because that's what you just got to keep going I mean you, like don't stop not moving. you don't have any headphones no in. no headphones so, yeah so you're just kind of you're just in your head yeah just hanging out just hanging like, out and keep going there's so much going on around you I think also I've noticed like in my training whenever it's really hard I actually don't want the headphones like I don't want any other stimulation gotcha. I'm just doing this yeah um so it's sort of a pure focus I think that's awesome um but yeah, I got to the top of that and uh, was feeling good. Saw some guy with like his wheel blown up at the top. And then as I started descending, coming down, I saw uh, who I presumed to be his wife, like running up with a replacement wheel. And I thought, oh, wow. Like, and I actually had yelled to this lady, like, you're a superhero, <laughs> only to start blowing my own back tires out shortly thereafter. Um I blew one out and I had a spare on me, so I switched it out and it almost immediately blew out again. So I was like, okay, there's something in the tire. Whatever. I don't know what I'm going to do. That was my spare. I'm kind of out. And then Drew, random cyclist uh, along the way, was like, hey, do you need anything? And I'm like, do you have a tube? He's like, yeah. And he's like, I switch it for you. So he actually changed the tube for me which is something well. we need to like practice before we do this a again lot, we need yeah, to like figure a lot more. yeah <laughs> this is like and a just critical. have lots of tubes have um, lots of tubes and figure out how to change them real quick. but he fixed it and then i rode for a while and there's like this three mile section that's paved road before you get to the final checkpoint and i i'm looking at my back tire and i can see it's just slowly going down and i'm like oh man so i get to the, the final checkpoint there's like an aid station there someone pumps it back up and i'm like okay i'm good I'm going to make it through this last section here. Like this is 92 miles in. So yeah, I'm so like I, done. And I'm watching, I'm like watching it and I'm like, okay, he's supposed to be coming through the, so we're actually, the boys and I are at the finish line. They have like their bikes. Like we are like, he's supposed to, and he was supposed to be coming in 
Like two, we were two hours before. Yeah, yeah. so we're I'm kind of like, where is he? I don't have a good enough signal to like see where he's at. But I'm like, he's supposed to be like any minute, you know, like kind of like, where is he? Yeah. So I'm going down this Making downhill right. section. It's real rocky and steep, and my tire blows out again. And uh, when you're going downhill at 20 miles an hour and your tire blows out, you can't just like lock up the brakes and stop. You kind of have to ease to a stop. So I'm like bouncing off of rocks and like my tire is just getting ripped up and my rim and I like get to a stopping That's point. That's the whole wheel. See, I, I didn't I have a good. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't have a good understanding. There's like the tire that goes around and then there's like the wheel and the wheel. Yeah, the tire, the tube. Yeah, there's the rim. Um, there's a yeah. lot there. There's a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, it was broken. It was really broken. And I like the got to wheel. a point. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I called Yana and I'm like. I guess I'm going to try to find a road, try to come find me. She's like, well, what do you need? Well, when he when he called, I thought it was going to be like, you got to be <laughs> waiting for me at the finish. So I, I'm like, I got it. We're at the finish line. Like, you know, and he's like, no, no, no. Like, you need to come. Get yeah, me. come get me. I'm done. I yeah, can't ride. He's like, I'm done. This is it. Like, you have to come get me. And I'm like, okay, this is not how I suspect the story ends. I was like, no, no. way. Yana no way. was like. <laughs> no what do you need okay. and i'm like well i need a whole new back wheel and she's like okay keep moving and hangs up the phone and i'm like okay i guess i'll keep moving so i kind of pushed my bike uphill because it was too hard to ride i rode downhill on the broken wheel um and kept going uh yana well it was 5 55 when okay. i got off the phone with yeah. him and I was like, okay, he needs a wheel. And I just look around and I just see all these bikes with wheels. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, right? And I'm like, at a bike race. I'm at a bike race. This can't be that difficult to find a wheel for someone, right? And I'm like, okay, I can't come up to a biker and just like ask them for a wheel because I don't actually know how to take it off. So then I'm like, maybe I should Google. So I just Googled like bike stores near me and Cycles for Life came up and it said that they close at six. And I called and I said, I need a tire for my husband. He's on the track. You know, and I like, I don't know, mumbled something. I'm like, can I just come in? And she's like, yes, come on in. Like, we're closing in five minutes. I'm like, I'll be there in three. And I actually, I, it, I'm at elevation. So now I'm like hustling to find this bike shop, right? So I'm, <laughs> I'm I had to like move really quickly to, to find, to get to this bike shop. And I got in, I'm like, okay, I need a tire. And they're like, okay, well, you know, do you know the size? So I actually did not know the size um, <laughs> because for whatever reason, I don't know. it. Um, so I called Josh again, which like, I had to call him like six times because of the we had just a horrible reception. Um, and he finally picked up and he, and he said like 26 or something. 29. Yeah. See, I don't 29. even know. Yeah. 29 yeah. is what he needed. I'm like, he needs a 29. I just need a 29. And they're like, well, and, uh, and no, I was like, you need the whole wheel. Not yeah, just he's like, he needs the whole wheel. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I just need any wheel. 29, that's what I need. And they were like, no, 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 no. Like, you need, like, we need more specifications. It's the gearing ratio. Yeah. yeah. And so they started asking me all these questions that I had no idea. Um, and so, and I can't get a hold of Josh anymore. And so I start calling um, Kevin at the bike shop, at our local our bike local, shop. Yeah. And I'm like, I need you. Help, help. And he was camping and he, you know, oh my God, it just totally worked out. He had reception for, you know, whatever that 10 minute phone call was. Yeah. He called, he spoke with the owner at Cycles for Life. I don't know, gave him whatever specifications. And um, he ends up, uh, the owner at Cycles for Life, he, he, they take off a wheel off a, t off a bike that's in the store. And he's like, here. And I'm like, okay. Just take it. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, how much is this? Is this like 200? And I have no concept for how much these tires cost. I thought I was like giving him all this money, and which which was 200 was probably not even close to what this bike, this tire was worth. Um, I'm like, how, you know, how, how much? And he's like, no, 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 just take it. Just bring it back to me tomorrow. And I was like, y you want me to walk out of the store with your bike, with, with, the, with this wheel? Like, do you want my name? Do you want anything? <laughs> like, he's like, I, I trust you. Yeah. Wow. And I thought, oh my God. I was like, well, do you want to like drive me there? He's like, I have a motorcycle. Like, I, I, I can't oh. take you there. <laughs> okay. Um, and so, um, so I, so now I'm like running with this, with this massive wheel down the streets of Leadville, 
trying to find my car, which at this point I've also forgotten where I parked. Right. Um, because I did not anticipate. I thought, oh, by the time, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll yeah. figure it out. Josh will be back. Um, so anyway, got to the car. Um, then I had to figure out where Josh was on the tr- on the um, on the course. On yeah. the course. Yeah. Yep. And I was like driving around. I ended up like there's like a, you know, they have security and police everywhere. And I'm like, hey, guys, have you seen a guy with like, you know, a flat back on a bike? On a bike? <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, we see a lot of guys with bikes, ma'am, you know, and like his, his back tires flat. Um, and some lady in the car behind me yells, I saw him go that way, you know. And I yell, I got to go that way. And these guys are just like laughing. I think they just are like, okay, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. And uh, they let me through. And I, uh, you know, and I was, I was like speeding down this road. I'm like, I just hope I don't hit anybody. Um, and I find Josh. And he like, I, I, and I think I asked, do you know how to change the tire? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. do you know what to do that. with it? I got that, yeah. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, so he just changed it and I was like, you know, your boys are like waiting for you at the finish line and like, get your yeah. ass over there. Like, don't get make moving. Us wait. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't make us wait. And he got on his bike and then, and I was also like nervous. Like, what if he gets on the bike and the tire, you know what I mean? Something happens again. So I like stood there like, like, you know, like an anxious mom, like, is he going to be okay? Um, just watching him, you know, and he was. Per- perfectly fine and you know. yeah got back at it I, yeah. at that point i think i only had like three miles left i think like i had made it six miles on this hobbled bike and then uh i got to finish the last three yeah. in great fashion yeah. um you know there's there's like a slight uphill at the end so you know you're like oh great i'm at the end no no it still drags on a little bit and uh at that point i was kind of with People that were really struggling a lot, you know, they, for whatever reason, maybe they had mechanical issues like I did, or they were just burnt out and like, you know, they're tired. And I was riding with one guy and this was like an 11 hour. So this was at about probably, yeah, probably, yeah, this was probably 12 hours. Yeah. So every, this is like, you know, they're, they've been biking now for like 11 hours straight, which is incredible. Yeah. And uh, I was talking to one guy and he's just like, oh, you know, it's uh, it's a lot harder than I thought. Like, I, I, I thought, you know, I'd be done hours ago. And I was like, oh, did anything go wrong? He's like, no. And I was like, oh, I had all these mechanical issues. And I told him, you know, about how Yana sourced a wheel and, and <laughs> randomly during a race found right? me. So you and, have time like having this whole discussion with somebody. Well, you're going <laughs> uphill. It's slow. It's slow. And, uh, you know, he's like, Wow you really have a keeper. Like Aww. you have such a great partner. Aww. And I was like, ah, and then I was like, yeah, all right, good. I got to get pedaling again. <laughs> so I <laughs> took off and kind of, you know, left him behind. But, um, as I'm coming into the finish line, there's like people kind of leaving for the day that, you know, their racers had already finished mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, they're carrying their stuff out, but they're still cheering every person that's coming mm-hmm. through. And there's like a little downhill and then an uphill to the finish line. And I like went down there and there's some people cheering me on. And I'm like, it's like 12 some hours in. Like, I'm just going to put it in the highest gear and pedal the hardest bit I can for this last little thing. And really pushed it in and uh, made it there. And the boys were at the finish line. And uh, it it was with their bikes. So they insisted on riding their bikes into the finish line, too. So they both want to do this race, too, when they get. When they get older. Yeah. Eli had told me that uh, before the race, if I finish it, then uh, he'll do it with me once he's 18. And yeah. uh, so I guess I got to stay in shape for a while, Wendy. <laughs> yeah. That sounds he's like a... turning eight this December, so... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is just going to be small potatoes by then, yeah. right? But uh, I, I think it was such an amazing experience, like having the support of Yana and the whole family there, like to cheer me on. And now, like, the boys just love riding their bikes even Uh, more. Like, they're so motivated. Kind of seeing that impact um, on my Garmin where I'm, like, tracking the course throughout the day. Like, our team members, a couple clients, Mm -hmm. our family, everyone's, like, texting me. And I'm not responding back to messages, but they pop up and they're like, you're doing great. And, like, seeing all that support. Everybody was so... I, I will say, okay, I was the present crew member, but there are so many people, like, friends and family 
who were constantly messaging Josh yeah. and me. Um, anytime the GPS wasn't showing his exact location, they would start messaging me. I'm like, guys, I can't fix the GPS. <laughs> Yeah. Right. And then um, when the when the when the wheel went out too, I didn't want to say anything to anybody because I was I was really worried at that point that we would get a uh, did not finish. Yeah, at the end. Yeah. yeah so. so I was I was really hustling to try to get him off the off the course. So I think if my day would have worked out perfectly, I could have done it in ten hours. Uh, if you finish this race in less than nine hours, you get this big belt buckle. <laughs> Um, if you finish it in less than 12, yeah. you get a smaller belt buckle. It's really practical here where we live on Yeah, the yeah, beach totally to necessary this, to have a big belt buckle belt here buckle, yes. in Michigan yeah. or in Pittsburgh. Southwest but uh, yeah. uh, I'm going to have to go back and get the big belt buckle. I mean, it's totally possible. Go. So, you know, so I, I what think. Do you say, what do you think your greatest takeaway was then? Yeah, I think it's just um, it for it just being a race. It was such an emotional thing. There were so many cool stories tied to it. I think seeing the energy that it brought to the family and other members and then like this support that I get from Yana where like not only does she push me to do things and like really push me to do things, but she is there to like support me through and through. Like when she's like I'm going to find you a wheel, I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> I'll keep walking like, you know, <laughs> okay. And sure enough, she found a wheel. Yeah. Um, well, I wasn't going to let you not finish. I think that was when you called and said I wasn't going to finish. I was like, if, if I have to carry you across, we're finishing. This is, we've been working hard at this. You know, I yeah. felt it was, you know, that grit and determination, you know, that I saw in Josh. Yeah. No crybaby excuses. Right? I knew that if he didn't get across that finish line, you know, we might have three episodes podcasts talking <laughs> about it. So I wanted to spare everyone. You're welcome, everyone. Thank you, Yana. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, from doing it. But I, I just, I knew that he could do it. I knew that he had it. And I was, you know, personally just pissed at this wheel. And I'm like, you know, if this is such a small thing that I can just help. You yeah. know, um, you know, outside of just holding his water pack all day. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think I think that support the training. I mean, it was so much time ahead of time. Like I spent so much time training to be able to do that. It was cool to see myself yeah. being physically able to do the race. And then the boy, like our kids watched me train, talk about it for so long, saw everything else. And then, oh, Dad saw this thing through. Like, I, I think that's a really good, um, it's a really good representation for the boys. I think it sets a good example. Yeah, a good and example seeing them, that, sure. like, it's a, as a family, we we completed this together. Like, it took everyone's support to make this happen. And uh, for our big client event this year, Wendy, we are supporting Variety, which is a charity in Pittsburgh that. Mm -hmm. um, they do multiple things, but specifically we're supporting um, adaptive bikes that they give uh, to families uh, in the area. So kids with uh, certain disabilities, for whatever reason, they can't ride a traditional bike. Uh, they make these adaptive bikes and fit them to the children so that they have the opportunity to to learn to ride a bike, mm -hmm. too. So it seems like a perfect fit that we're working with Variety this year. Mm -hmm. Um We've been super lucky. We've had some of our partners already donate. Yes. Um, we're on track to have five bikes. Yes, yeah, so we're hoping for, the for five bikes. Yeah. I mean, it really just gives children just the ability to feel included in this activity that, you know, kids are kids love bikes and they're, you know, participating in bikes. And it's really tough for those that can't participate, yeah. you know. And um, so I this is uh this actually has been um something that we're both very passionate about and we get to um, meet the families as well that the that will receive the recipients of the bikes too so um, just an amazing cause and it's run by um, an, an amazing group of people Tom Baker's over there um, mm -hmm. that's leading the effort um, and he's just absolutely great and um, super supportive the families are incredible so um, just a really great organization um, and if people want to go ahead and donate to this cause, how do they do that? Yeah, so we will have a link in the show notes. Sure. Um, but it's uh, so you can just donate directly through there. 
Um, there'll be a link. You can, you know, use credit card information, mail a check, whatever is easier sure. for you. Okay. Well, Josh, you did it, my man, with the help of a very good woman. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> um, it was great. Congratulations. I look forward to going back here soon. And, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe next year, maybe the year after, but getting that big belt buckle. So yeah. that'll be the second. Maybe you spared the third podcast, but that'll have to be a second one. Um, it was it was such a cool race. It it's was. very cool. It's a cool town, honest, honestly, like just visiting. I mean, we had just yeah. a great time. A ton of cool restaurants and like little spots uh, to see. So, it, you know, it was actually just a, a really fun little town to hang out in. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Um, you know, I think just like in retirement planning or anything else, having that training plan, sticking with it over time can breed some amazing results, even if things go wrong, like a broken wheel. Having the right partners <laughs> enables you to still finish the race, even if it's not in your initial uh, desired uh, time. But, you know, I finished it, and that was really the biggest goal. Yeah. So um, feeling pretty good about good that. You. And uh, yeah, I don't know. We're incredibly It's a big proud. challenge. Yeah. 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 All right, guys. Well, we're about out of time. So, Josh, can you tell us how we can get in touch with you if uh, somebody wants a little more information? Yeah, if you want to talk about bike racing, I can certainly do that. Or <laughs> if you want to talk about retirement planning. Or maybe planning. finances. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want to talk about retirement planning and planning out your plan for retirement, we're happy to do so. Uh, there'll be a link in the show notes to schedule a 15-minute phone call with me. You can give us a call at 412-998-PLAN or check out our website at leonardadvisorygroup.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel, I encourage you to do so. And if you're listening to this on your favorite podcast platform, make sure to give us a rating and subscribe.